Today, I wanna to jump on the bandwagon and talk about new NAM releases in 2021. What's up guys, Jake here, and today I wanna to take a few minutes, make a short video, and just talk about my favorite releases from NAM this year. So obviously because of this crazy thing in the world that I can't say without getting demonetized, there's no in-person NAM this year. So everything's online, it's all virtual, and the past week or two, brands have started to really push new gear. Uh, there's some really, really cool stuff coming out, and I'm super excited to show you guys some of my favorites. So we're going to go over a couple of my favorite releases right now, and I'm even going to show you a guitar that I might have, but most definitely bought. So let's go ahead and start with my favorite brand, EVH Gear. Lots of cool stuff from them. They're doing new colors on the Wolfgangs. I'm really geeked about the Koa on the Special. Uh, that's usually, Koa is usually something you more or less see on acoustics most of the time. And so to see it on an electric, uh, and a shreddy electric is really cool. So the standards, nothing's really changed but the colors. Floyd Rose Special, uh, EVH Trem, you know, the standard humbucking, Wolfgang humbucking pickups and all that. Not much has really changed besides some new colors. You know, they're doing uh, some more exotic ones this year like they've done in the years past. That's super cool. Now, we gotta talk about the guitar everybody's most excited for with uh, EVH Gear in 2021 being the revamped 5150 series. They released the 5150 series a few years ago that was based off of Eddie's Kramer, except with these ones, they've kept the body shape, kept the headstock, uh, but they've given you two pickups. Uh, Floyd Rose 1000, D-Tuna, Wolfgang humbucking pickups, low friction, high friction volume tone pots, super cool guitars. Now on the old 5150 series, the selector switch was where Eddie used to have it on his music bands, but now that's moved up and they've, they've replaced it with a kill switch. So I know what you're thinking, great, the DK24, yeah, kind of, and I've always said that when EVH released the 5150 series, it was going to be hard for them to compete with the AZ series from Ibanez, uh, the Shargal DK24s, however, here is where EVH gear takes the cake. Stealth, they're doing a stealth one. This is the coolest looking guitar to be released in a long time, in my opinion. Stealth out like Eddie's Wolfgang, matte too, it's not gloss, ebony fingerboard, ebony fingerboard on a $900 guitar, Floyd Rose 1000, D-Tuna, high quality Wolfgang pickups, all this on a $900 guitar. Now, shred guitars, usually, you know, they're basswood bodies, maple neck, and they're cheap because they're simple guitars. This is giving you so many premium features for less than a thousand bucks. And I am in love with the stealth black color, the ebony fingerboard, and that red kill switch just pops. I can't get over it. I'm trying so hard to be responsible and not buy one of these, but I'm definitely going to get one of these sometime. High friction, low friction, high friction, low friction pots. I mean, like I said, all these premium features, this is a no-brainer. I'm sure they're going to play great. Uh, I believe they're still made in their Mexico plant, in the Fender Mexico plant. So it's going to be a solid guitar and just the cosmetic appeal is incredible. They're also doing this black. They're also doing this blue, which doesn't pop as much for me. I, I'm really in love with that stealth with the ebony board. They're also doing a 5150 uh, series with a maple board, but they're only doing it in pink. I think if they would have thrown some more colors out there, the maple board would be more appealing. I think they did a white one. I don't remember if they did a white one last year. But I think if they did a white one, then they'd have more luck selling the maple fingerboard ones. But a pink guitar is hard to move. Or is it? More on that later. So other than that, you know, they're doing a uh, Wolfgang Special with ebony fingerboard like they always do, but they add a ton of colors. As of the past few years, it's just been ivory and stealth, but now they're doing blue, purple, pink, and a light blue. Now they, they did these before, but they're more like an FSR or a special run, but they're bringing them back in 2021, which is cool. Last year you could only buy the ivory or the stealth one new, I believe. So that's it for new EVH stuff. I mean, they're still doing all the same stuff. The amps, the stealth LBX was released a while back. People are going crazy for those. Uh, once they start shipping the Frankies again, they're gonna do great with those. But other than that, yeah, just new colors on the Wolfgangs and those killer stuff doing 50 series. Now, I'm also pretty big on Fender stuff and they're doing a lot of cool stuff this year. Uh, they're doing the 75th anniversaries, so it's all gold hardware, but other than that, it's 
pretty much just a professional, I think. Say nothing too cool, but the gold hardware does make it look nice and vintage. Uh, here's 75th anniversaries with matching headstock. That's really cool. They're doing this new Mustang Micro, which I think is a cool concept. Vox has always sold the Amplugs, which are super popular. Blackstar started doing the Fly Amplug. Uh, these are too expensive though. 100 bucks, I mean, it seems to do a lot. You have different effects, different amp models, but 100 bucks is too much for one of these. This should be like 50, 60 bucks, and I think people would be pre ordering them like crazy. But yeah, 100 bucks is a bit much. I mean, like I said, it appears to do a lot. I'm not sure what the USB jack's for, but you have a big volume knob and on the side. You have EQ, different amps, effects, and the modifies to change things on the effects, which is a cool advantage, which is why I think they could price it a little bit more than the Amplugs, is you can modify the effects instead of just like the uh, really simple control, like on the Blackstar ones and the Vox ones. Not too geeked about that. I think some people are. So hey, here's the stuff I'm excited about. They're doing the Lux Strat and the Lux Tele with Floyds. These are really cool. Uh, it seems like every brand this year is really jumping on a super strap. And I, I like how Fender looks. And I always love the look of like a classic Fender with a Floyd. And they put a good Floyd. They put a Floyd 1000, you know, Korean made one on there. Uh, the noiseless pickups. Just a solid rock and roll guitar there. Made in the US. 2400 bucks is a lot though. You know, for just a black guitar HSS with a Floyd. That's a lot of money. You know, this isn't much different. This isn't much different than a professional besides it has a Floyd. And a Floyd isn't, you know, $800 extra. I, I love the telly though. That just makes me want to buy it just to play Motley Crue licks uh, and dive bomb like crazy. That's super cool. They're putting a Floyd on a telly this year. So you got some other stuff. I don't know who Ben Gibbard is, but that's a pretty cool Mustang with the natural finish. Uh, the Noventas, I think, are kind of cool, mainly because it's black and red and I'm a huge Gillis fan. Uh, the P90s are kind of interesting, but Hardtail, that's cool. I think this is priced right at a thousand bucks. I'm sure it's made in Mexico at that price point. So you're really starting to jack up the price of some of the Mexico stuff and jack up the price of the Squire stuff, but give you a lot of features on the Squires. Doing a few different colors in these. That red is takes the cake though. Just really cool looking. So I think those will do well, especially at a thousand bucks. That's a that's a fair price. The Noventa with a single pickup in a tele format, I think that's even cooler. Doing the custom pro amps and the Vibro Champ, I mean, I'm not crazy and and Fender amps are cool, but they're not my cup of tea. But I know these small amps like the Princeton, etc. A thousand bucks. They're expensive, but phew, you ain't gonna beat the sound. And here's the cool stuff: the contemporaries. I have always thought the contemporaries were pretty cheesy. They did that one a few years back that was black and white with cheap Floyd, and it was just really busy on top because you had the output jack on top, and I was just never crazy about it. I was watching Agafish the other morning. I saw this guitar and pre-ordered it that day. So this guitar is on the way to me, and I can't get over the features for 450 bucks. Baked maple neck, matching headstock, two humbucking pickups, Floyd Rose uh, licensed trim, single volume, single tone, and a five-way selector switch. Total shred with some sickle coil tones. I love it, and I can't get over that shell pink. I've wanted a pink guitar for a long time, but they all look kind of cheesy. This one with the baked maple, that just looks like a classy shredder's dream. Uh, one other thing, there is a plate on the back that everyone's like, oh, is this active? No, it's not active, it's a passive guitar. The jack's on the bottom, which is a thing I didn't like on the old contemporary, having that jack on top. It made the top of the guitar look really busy. This just looks classy, and I hope that baked maple looks good in person. I'm not crazy about the baked maple and the Wolfgang specials, and I know these are probably made in the same plants, but these photograph a lot better, so I'm hoping when mine gets here it looks like this, not too dark, not too light. They're estimating shipping out on April 10th for these guys, and I just keep checking my email hoping it ships out. I am so geeked. This is going to be a killer guitar. That was the most exciting thing for man for me, besides the 5150 series. You know, Fender did some cool stuff, and we're gonna look at the Shardell stuff here in a minute, but that is just a solid, solid looking guitar. 
Uh, they also did the contemporary here with the HS, or HH, just like the hot rail uh, type of pickup in the bridge. And they did these weird three single coil ones, which honestly are pretty cool. I kind of dig this red burst here. Looks a little cheesy, but I, I really dig it. So let's go ahead and jump over to Charvel stuff. I mean, everyone's been you know texting me about the Charvel stuff, and this is honestly the first time I've looked through it. After I saw that Squire, I really didn't care about anything else besides getting my hand on an EDH guitar. But yeah, they're doing like the Pro Mod basses. That's that's something they needed to do for a long time. Uh, the Pro Mod SoCal's, they're doing some new colors. And these are just, I, these are a great deal. Floyd Rose 1000, Seymour Duncan Full Shrimp pickups, I think. Oh, that's in the DK24s. Let me see if they say what they put in these guys. Seymour Duncan Distortions. So good pickups, good woods, good trim, thousand bucks. These are great guitars. They're made in Mexico. I couldn't recommend these enough. Uh, they're doing some blacked out stuff. I mean, Charvel's owned by Fender, EBH is owned by Fender, so a lot of the guitars look the same, just, you know, a little bit different. So they're doing the stealth thing, but I think the EBH ones are just nailing it. Uh, this totally looks like a PC1 knockoff. Again, I, I think this would look a little better with a pickguard, but that, that gold trim really pops. I, I really dig the HSH DK24s and this new dark blue or mystic blue they're doing looks really sharp. Uh, whoa, whoa. That is a relic guitar. Wow. I don't know who that is, but he likes his guitars to feel played. I wish I could, I wish I could give you more. Oh, they do here at the gallery, more photos. I actually really like relic guitars. I know that seems to be becoming an unpopular opinion these days, but I'm a pretty big fan of relic guitars. Frankly, I think they feel really good when you pick them up and they look really cool. Uh, they have got the trim leaned up against the body like BBH style. That's a cool guitar. The only thing I don't like about signature guitars is when I don't know the person. So I don't know whose guitar I'm playing, but that's, that's really cool. 1600 bucks is a lot. Um, I really like relic guitars that are like under a grand because you know they look used, but they're, you know, relicking is not a cheap thing to do and I respect that. But like paying that much for something that, you know, is made to look played, I don't know, something about it seems weird, but like those 70s Fender Tellies they do for like 900 bucks that have a really good relic game, I'm, I'm about, those are cool. Oh, here we go. Like PRS did last year, they're doing the, the ash body with the bright colors and the matching pickups. Those are interesting. Oof, that's really cool. It's like a Tele Strat. Oh, I thought it had a Floyd. I'd be way about that guitar if I had a Floyd. Yeah, I don't know. None of the Charvel stuff really popped as much as the Squire and EBH stuff for me. Uh, you know, I tried to look at like Kramer new releases, but Kramer never ships anything. I've been trying to buy a Beretta for like three years, and they're always like, tomorrow we're shipping. Next month, in a week. And they, nothing ever ships. And they, yeah, I saw articles, Kramer, new for 2021, and it was the same models I've been pushing for years that, again, have been very slowly being produced, so I'm not even going to really look at that stuff. These are kind of my three favorite brands to look at, so I think we've got a lot of cool stuff coming uh, with, again, this thing I can't say without getting demonetized. Guitars are getting pre-ordered quickly, uh, so I'd get your name on a list with a dealer if you want one of these. I think that it's going to, you know, they're going to come quick, but stuff's going to get snatched up. You know, people are all about buying guitars right now. So guys, those are some of my favorite NAMM 2021 releases. Let me know uh, what you guys are most excited for and let me know what you think of the Squire I pre-ordered. Was that a weird move getting a pink guitar? You're gonna have to let me know, but you're not changing my mind. Anyway guys, that's pretty much gonna do it for this video. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button, throw a thumbs up on this video, and any comments, drop them down below. See you guys later.